Once again, thank you guys so much for joining today's webinar. Let's begin. This is how Spike looks when you first open the desktop app. On the left side, you'll see the content of your inbox. Up top are any pinned messages or items, and the rest of your inbox is displayed in chronological order, meaning your newer messages are shown up top, and you can scroll down to see your message history. To get to Spike's main menu, click on your profile picture in the top left corner. Here, you'll see all the email addresses you've connected to Spike, and under each one, you'll see its folders. If you have any custom-made folders, click on Show Folders, and the rest of your folders will be displayed. Keep scrolling to get to Spike's settings. We'll go over the settings a bit more later on. Now let's talk about Spike's conversational chat. To send a new message, click on the blue pen icon and the composer will open up. Type in the email addresses or use your mouse to select them. If you need to CC or BCC someone, click on the name and then select CC or BCC. Type in a subject line and then type in your message. You'll see down below that Spike offers some formatting options such as bold, italicize, underline, strike through, linking. For hyperlinks, you can change text color or background color, add in a numbered list or bullet list, and you also can increase indentation from the left or from the right. This button here is for removing formatting. If you need to include an attachment, click on the plus button. Here you'll see the ability to browse your computer for files. You can attach something from a cloud account, such as Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive. You also can select something from recent files, which are files that you've recently sent or received on Spike. And you can also include a voice message. The meeting invitations are for video or voice calls. Um, the recipient doesn't need to be a Spike user in order to get on a call with you call with you, they'll receive the invitation via their email and they can join you on a video or voice call on their internet browser. You are also able to drag and drop attachments from your desktop directly into Spike. And once you're done, once you're done working on your message, click on the blue send button. Similar to all chat apps, messages you sent are on the right-hand side and messages you receive are shown on the left-hand side. Newest messages are shown down below and you can scroll up to see your message history. Hover your mouse next to any message and you'll see some floating icons. The left facing arrow is Spike's quote reply feature, which is gonna paste the content of the message down below and it allows you to easily understand which message you are replying to. You also have here the star to star an individual message and this individual message will then be accessible in your starred folder. You can trash an individual message and you can click on these three dots here to reveal more actions. You can open up this menu by clicking on the three dots like I just said, or you can right click on any message in order to see it. So I'm gonna click on these three dots here and let's look at this menu. Here you'll also see the ability to forward messages. You can copy and paste the content of the message, print the message. We have a built-in translation feature. If you want to trash it, here's again the trash. And if you wish to apply a tag, which is Spike's folder system, click on edit tags and then select whatever tag that you wish for that message to go to. If you want to copy paste just one word and not the whole message, use your mouse to select the individual word and then use your keyboard to do com control C or command C or right click and then click on copy. Spike by default is hiding email signatures. If you wanna check out your email signature or the recipient's email signature, click on the message to expand it and then the signature will be revealed.
if you want to check out a timestamp, click on the, the profile picture of the message and then you'll be able to see when the message was sent out of Spike. Spike offers an undo send feature which can be a total lifesaver. You have 10 seconds to undo send a message once you've hit send. Right click or click on the three dots and then select unsend message. This is a huge help if you've realized you forgot to send an attachment, you've made a spelling mistake, etc. Undo send will be your best friend. Now let's talk about Spike's priority in other inboxes. Spike by default divides your inbox into two sections, priority and other inboxes. Your priority inbox includes important messages, while the, the other inbox includes promotional offers, social media notifications, etc. It's important to note that if you're receiving a message from somebody for the first time, the message will automatically go to your other inbox. Once you reply to that message, it'll automatically go over to the priority inbox. If you wish to manually move a thread or an item from other to priority, right click on the three dots and then select priority. It also works the same way for moving things from priority to other. Simply right click or click on the three dots and then select other. Now let's talk a bit about tags. Tags are Spike's email folder system. If you wish to put a conversation into a tag, right click or click on the three dots and then select move. Choose the tag of your choice or type in a new tag's name. Click on the plus button and then that conversation is automatically moved over to the new tag. Spike offers bulk actions in order for you to trash, archive, or mark as read multiple conversations at once. To begin bulk action, click on a circular avatar picture and then use your keyboard and with the shift key to select multiple conversations that come one after the other. Once you've selected all of the conversations you want to include, Click up top, trash, archive, or mark as read. You also can just use your mouse when you're doing the bulk, se bulk selection. Click on the avatar picture and then hand pick whichever threads you wish to include. Once you're done, once, once you're done, click on trash, archive, or mark as read. I'm gonna trash these messages. Now I'd like to show you how to add another email address into Spike. Click on your profile picture in the top left corner and then select Add Account. Spike works with Gmail, Outlook, Hotmail, iCloud, and more. Simply type in your email address and then click on the blue Add Account button. You'll then be, you'll then be prompted to add in your password and once you've added your password, Spike will then begin to sync with that email address. Spike's unified inbox allows you to see the content of all your connected email addresses in one place. This means you no longer need to hop between vari various email applications or multiple browsers. All of your content of your email is accessible in one place. To get to the unified inbox, click on your profile picture in the top left corner and then select Unified. The color coding system allows you to easily understand which message belongs to which account. For example, the messages with this purple color belong to my professional email address, and the messages with this yellow color belong to my personal email address. Before I move on to show you the settings, I wanna get out of the Unified inbox and go back to my professional email address. Now let's talk about Spike settings. To get to the settings, click on your profile picture in the top left corner and then select settings. 
Now let's talk about the way that Spike organizes your conversations. By default, Spike is set to people mode. In people mode, all of your conversations, your threads are organized by the recipient. No matter if the subject line changes or not, all of your messages are consolidated into one single thread. You also have two other options, which are subject mode and inbox mode. Subject mode organizes by subject and all recent activity. So now I have multiple threads with Mike because the subject line had changed. Lastly, we have inbox mode, which is organizing by subject and giving you a separate inbox slash sent folder. To get to your sent folder, click on the profile picture in the top left corner and then select sent. It's important to understand that no matter which organization mode you use, the send folder always exists in your email provider. And with every message that you send out of Spike, that folder in your email provider will always populate with the sent messages. However, if you want to see your sent folder in Spike, you'll have to change over to inbox mode. Before I move on, I'm going to move back to people mode because it is my favorite. Now let's go into the count settings so I can show you a few more things. F from the top to the bottom, I'm going to click on my profile. Here is where you can change the way your name is presented in Spike and you can upload a profile picture or change your profile picture. Under appearance, you have account color. You have 25 different options to choose from. This is the color that's appearing in the unified inbox. Now, under old school email settings, click on signature. Here is where you can set up an email signature. As soon as you set up an email signature in Spike, it's going to be automatically added to every single message that you send out of Spike. Here, you can copy paste text or you can also paste in images, etc. Once you're done with your edits, click on the left facing arrow and your signature will be saved. Lastly, I'm going to show you here the message templates. Message templates are great if you find yourself often repeating messages. To create a new message template, click up top, create new message template. Here you can type in the name, add in some text, and then you have formatting options down below. I'll show you one of the ones I've already created in the past. For example, here's a template for a situation that someone doesn't reply to me. I called it ghost me and I've, I have some text here. Once you're done making any edits or you're creating a new template, click on the blue check and the template will be saved. I want to show you how to use the templates in action. Let's click on this conversation with Mike in the bottom right corner here. Click on the blue lightning bolt and then you'll see all your templates here and you also have an ability here to create a new message template. Now I'm going to show you how to perform a search in query on Spike. To begin a search, click on the magnifying glass above your feed. Type in a keyword such as call. Then you can use the filter buttons such as priority to filter for only messages that contain the word call that are located in your priority inbox. You also can then type in shortcuts for the search such as before year 2022. Now all of the results are including messages that are in the priority inbox and they were received before the year 2022. Now I want to show you Spike Snooze feature. Spike, Spike's news feature is essentially a customer reminders feature. It allows you to remove items from your inbox and you get to pick the time and date when the item will reappear in your inbox. Spike's news is perfect for when you receive messages out of work hours or if you want to be in control of your time and only see things that are relevant to you and get rid of things that are a distraction. So to snooze an item, right click or click on the three dots and then select in the second row between later today, tomorrow, next week and pick. 
I'm going to pick a date and time. I'm going to choose Thursday for 6.15 p.m., click snooze. My conversation with Mike then went to the snooze folder and it'll reappear on Thursday at 6.15 p.m. To get to your snooze folder, click on your profile picture in the top left corner and then select snoozed. Now I'd like to show you Spike's scheduled send or send later feature. Similar to the snooze feature, scheduled send allows you to pick and choose at which date and time message will be sent out of Spike. So I'm going to open up a new message. Now in the bottom right corner, I'm going to click on the up facing arrow and click on scheduled send. I'm going to pick a date and time and then I'm going to click scheduled send. This message will then go to my scheduled send folder and it'll re the message will be sent out at the date and time that I chose. The last thing I want to show you guys to wrap up our webinar are Spike's keyboard shortcuts. To check out Spike's keyboard shortcuts, click on the question mark in the top right corner and then select keyboard shortcuts. Here you'll see a full menu of keyboard shortcuts that are made just for Spike. Of course, if you're on Mac, this is how your keyboard shortcuts will look like. And if you are on a Windows computer, there are other keyboard shortcuts that are for Windows. Some of my favorite keyboard shortcuts are Command N or Control N to open up the to open up the composer. You have Control Shift F or Command Shift F to send to change the sending email address. And you'll see that we have a lot more beyond those two that I just showed you. That's all for today. I want to thank you guys so much for sticking with me through the webinar, and I hope you guys have a re good rest of your day. Until next time, bye!